Ho, ho, ho. O M G. Ho, ho. Holy crap, I'm not in a good mood. I do have Brugger's coffee, but it's cold. Do you know why it's cold? Because I've done this once. There, look, look, I did all the notes. Oh, it's so gorgeous. There you go. Slow it down. You can watch it. Oh, do you want to see it again? Hold on. There it is again. I've done it twice. Oh, my God. The second time was really, really good. I did a great job with the second time. And guess what? Here we go again. Because there was a setting wrong on my file, and I didn't know it. And I thought I fixed it, and I didn't fix it. I even had a Brugger's bagel this morning. It was an everything bagel. It apparently sucked everything out of my brain. But I got coffee. But it's cold, because I've been doing this for like an hour. But you don't want to listen to me complain. Nobody wants to listen to me. Okay? They want to see Mr. Key come out. And they want to see Mr. Key be happy. He's got a happy hat on. He's got a smile on his face. <laughs> Not really. We're doing this again for the third time. If I, by the way, if this doesn't work, this video is going bodied. It's done. It's all over with. I'm throwing it off the cliff. And I might throw this computer off the cliff too. Here we go, kids, for the third time. By the way, I'm going to tell the same jokes I told in the first two videos in this one. They may not be as funny the third time because it'll be the third time I've told it. So, kids, we're going to talk about rational functions. Rational functions. Boy, I feel like I've said this before. By the way, kids, us lazy math teachers, we don't like to write the word functions out. We write to write f and c. Now, let me give you the definition of the function. A function has the form of f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p and x, p of x and q of x are polynomials, and q of x can equal zero. There's like half of you going, this is why I hate math, because that guy just spoke in a different language, and I don't understand anything he just said. Oh, yeah? But I got a cool hat on, <laughs> and I got a fake smile on, because I really should not be doing this anymore today. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm going to go crazy. Drink some coffee. All this says is you can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction. And we know that. It makes a fraction undefined, so don't do it. You're learning a new parent function today. The new parent function is, well, that should come as no surprise, x to the negative 1. But we will probably almost always see it as 1 over x. And you know that when you have a negative exponent, it has nothing to do with it being positive or negative. You guys like my hat, don't you? It's the last video of 2015. What it does is it turns that thing, I'm like, I'm like a spastic, can't keep my head on straight guy today because I've had way too much coffee. But it made it does is it takes this and turns it into a fraction. So it has nothing to do with negative or positive. So let's take a look to see what the graph or the parent function of 1 over x looks like. What it looks like is a line or curve that gets closer and closer and closer to that line and gets closer and closer and closer to this line. And it also goes forever and ever and ever up. And it comes down and down and down and gets forever and ever closer to this line. The shape of this is called a hyper hyperbola. Hyperbola. Hyperbole is like in English, I think, right? I would know it's something in hyperbole. I don't know. Someone tell me what hyperbole means sometime. At any rate, what I want you to make sure that you're aware of is that we have this imaginary border right here. You got an imaginary like boundary line, and we have an imaginary boundary line right here. These imaginary boundary lines are called asymptotes. We're going to come back to those and define those in a minute, but they are going to help you find the domain and range. So remember, the domain is how much I can go left or right. So as I look at this graph, it looks that I can go forever and ever, ever and ever going this way. But as I go to the right, it looks like there's something stopping me. It's like a boundary line. I can't go past this. And as soon as I go past this line and miraculously start up here, and I go back and forever and ever and ever to the right. So the domain is the set of all reals. So x is in the set of all real values. 
such that x cannot equal 0. And it really should come as no surprise to you that x can't equal 0, because we've talked about before that you can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. And so clearly, if x equals 0, that fraction becomes undefined. And you can't have 0, and you can't have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction. Otherwise, it's an undefined fraction. Now, as we take a look at this parent function, which is the line y equals uh, x, let me erase this, all this crazy stuff that I have here. Ah, uh, that I had that. Uh, as I erase all this, uh, and I take a look at this function, I want to know how in the world I can make y equal to 0. The only way y can equal 0 is if the numerator is equal to 0. And in this case, our numerator is 1. It will never, ever be 0. So therefore, uh, this fraction could never equal 0. And therefore, if you look over at the graph, as the y values go up, it goes for up forever and ever and ever, and it starts to come down, but again, it runs into this green boundary line, which is called an asymptote. And again, here, it comes here, and then it goes forever and ever down, but in this case, y cannot equal 0. And so that's the restriction on the parent function of the line y, e, or of the, of the graph y equals 1 over x, so the function y equals x, 1 over x. Asymptotes. Asymptotes are imaginary boundary lines. Uh, well, imaginary boundary lines for which the graph approaches but does not cross. So imaginary boundary lines for which the graph approaches but does not cross. So yeah, I'm going to have the kids to say, we're going to asymptotes. So yeah, let's embrace that. Can't touch the thing in the nut. Can't touch my asymptote. Mm -hmm. Can't touch my asymptote. Don't touch my asymptote. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You like my hand, don't you? Don't touch the asymptote. Can't touch this. There's the function. Let's talk about some transformations of the function. Because remember, every time we've learned a parent function up until now, we've always then done the transformations on that parent function. And that's what we're going to do right now. Now, when you add right next to the x, I want you to think about that as being inside the parentheses. And if you remember correctly, inside the parentheses were shifts left and right. So if I add h, this is a uh, translation. These are all going to be translations except the last one. Translations left h units. If I subtract next to the x, that's being again inside. That is still a movement left or right. So it is a translation right h units. When you're at the ta when you tag it on the end like this, and one of these two, you tag it on the end, it's like being outside of the parentheses. It's being outside or away from the x. That's going to be a vertical shift up and down. In either of these cases, it's going to be a vertical shift up and down or a translation. And this is normal, remember? So when you add up k units, so up and down is normal. Left and right is backwards. So in this case, down uh, k units. And it should come as no surprise that when we throw a negative on the, it is a reflection, negative in front, it is a reflection in the x-axis. I wonder if I said that in my last twice, I've team times it. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, look. There it is. I did it already before. Wow. Oh, yeah. I should probably say the x-axis is the line y equals zero. All right. So moving on. Oops. Equals zero. So let's go through a few of these. Let's see, uh, answer some simple questions. Try to get this thing away from my big head. Uh, rational functions are fractions, and we know that fractions are undefined when we have a zero in the denominator. So as I look at these three examples below, I'm going to ask myself what fractions or what uh, restrictions on the domain on there or what would make this equal to zero? In this case, of course, it would be six. What would make this 
equal to zero? Well, it's x squared minus 16 equals zero. And then x squared equals 16. And then you take the square root of both sides. And don't forget, when you take the square root, you put a plus or minus. So plus or minus 4. So in this case, it's OK, the restrict, but the restrictions on the domain are positive 4 and negative 4. Now i got to factor this. In this case, I'm going to factor it. The last, I, and I did the same on the last one. I factored it. Uh, x plus 8, x minus 2. But my two answers are x equals negative 8 and x equals 2. Those are my two roots or solutions. And so those are what go in here. Those are the restrictions on the domain. What make them equal to 0? Not the factors, not the x plus 8. It's the actual root or 0. All right. Now let's start taking a look to see what this looks like graphically. Here's what, again, here's what the parent function looks like. The parent function goes to this point right here and then approaches both the boundary lines, asymptotes. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. Can't touch my, my crazy head. So anyway, here's what we got. We're tagging on the end. We're, that's a shift up three. So normally the, y, the, the asymptote would be here. But because it's got that plus 3, it got moved up 3. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. Excuse me, y equals 3. Ah, y equals 3. And my vertical asymptote, because I did not move left or right at all, my vertical asymptote is x equals 0. Still this line. So now I'm going to graph it. I want to go through this point here, 1 up and 1 down. And I want to try to draw a smooth curve trying to approach these axes. Smooth curve approaching these axes. Now think about it, though. x still can't equal 0, so that's the restriction on that domain. Sorry about that parenthesis. But y can be 0. Why 0 right there? What y can't be in this case is 3. So as we're thinking about horizontal and vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote will give you the restriction on the range and the vertical asymptote will give you the restriction on the domain. And when we do these, that's what we want to, what we want to be thinking about, OK? So let's go over here. We're moving, because we're adding next to the x, this is going to be right 1. And it might be helpful to draw it. So that's my vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Well, that's going to be the value that x cannot equal. Since I didn't put anything on the end here, my horizontal asymptote, my horizontal, I sound like a, uh, is y equals 0. It's not going to change. Well, and then, of course, then that's my restriction on the domain. Ding, 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 ding. Goes through this point, goes through this point. Try to draw a smooth curve. That's terrible. Going towards the line, but not crossing it. If you cross the line, you're going to lose points because you have to draw a relatively accurate graph. It's very difficult with this electronic pen of mine to do that graphing. All right, so let's talk about this shift. This shift, it's adding next to the x. Adding means we're going to go backwards. So that means we're going to get the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Which means, of course, that x can't equal negative 2. We're also subtracting on the outside, which means our horizontal asymptote is going to move down four units, which means can't equal negative four. Negative four, there it is. And we're going to go through this point, and we're going to go through this point. We're going to try to draw a smooth one going towards the asymptote, but don't cross it. Don't touch this asymptote. Can't touch my asymptote. I know, I missed my calling. I should have been a rap star. All right, kids. By the way, my last couple of videos, you know what they sounded like this? Because the video wasn't, the audio wasn't working. Really annoying. Minus 3. That's backwards. So that means our, our vertical asymptote is x equals 3. This up and down is my horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So if my vertical asymptote is x equals 3, x can't equal 3. If my horizontal asymptote is x, y equals 1, y can't equal 1. Go through this point and go through this point and try to touch the axes. Like this and like that. 
Okay. Let's go to the next one. All right, let's take a look and see what's going on here. We've got a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1. I should have put that there, but x can't equal negative 1. Ding, 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 ding. And I'm actually going to change this to 3 because 5 is too annoying. You'll see why in a moment. And my, ver my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals negative 3. Therefore, y can't equal negative 3. Ding, 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 ding. But I also have this weird thing, right? My, remember, my parent function up here is y equals 1 over x. That's the parent function. So what have I done here if I have a 4 in the numerator? Well, what I've done is I've actually multiplied 4 times 1 over, which means we have a dilation. And, as you, and again, I started with that 4 over x. Notice that dilation, what happened? Normally the point's here and here but it moved away, it dilated, it changed its rate of change. So all that means is that I'm, it's not going to change my left or right movement or my up or down, but the rate of change is going to change. First of all, we're going to go a little bit further away, and then we're going to draw in those horizontal asymptotes. Go here, notice I'm going further away, and then it's going to go like this. There's still asymptotes. Don't cross this and don't touch that. Don't touch my asymptote. By the way, you've got to get a really good handle on your horizontal versus vertical lines. Remember, vertical lines are up and down, and those are x equals lines. And horizontal lines, the horizontal lines are y equals lines. So horizontal lines are lying flat on their back. So that's hor I mean flat down, straight down. Those are horizontal lines. And vertical lines, whatever this is, it doesn't have to be zero. Our vertical lines are straight up and down. Okay? Don't forget that. X equals lines go up and down. Y equals lines part. All right, let's see what we got here. So we have, notice we have a dilation. But my vertical asymptote, remember vertical are straight up and down. Those are the X lines, is X equals 5. It is the opposite here. And then the normal goes here y equals 2. So, can't touch this 5, can't touch this 2. Oh, I shouldn't have picked 5, but whatever, I'll pick 5. Oh, no, I'm not picking 5. Let's change that to a 3. Sorry, because 5 is just a pain in the neck to grab, especially on this one. Positive 5, right? Positive 5. And we're going up positive 2. So remember, because we have this dilation, we moved away actually two. So I'm going to expect to see a little bit of extra movement on your graphs. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. It's just a sketch. But I do want to see that you do represent and recognize that there is a little bit more movement away from this, these, this intersection of these two imaginary boundary asymptotic lines. All right, moving on. That's going to give me x equals positive 3 which I just drew, and y equals negative 1. Remember, those, oops, equals. Those give me these values, 3 and negative 1. Maybe grab the green, get a little festive. We also have a dilation, so we're going to move further away and draw my curve so that it goes and approaches these lines of asymptot. What you say is it approaches asymptotically. Ooh, that's so special. Gee, I wonder when we're going to get something new. Oh, look, something new. Now, you'll notice that there's no change on this. The only change is the negative. Therefore, it's basically the parent function with a reflection. And the parent function has the asymptotic lines or the lines of asymptotes as x equals 0 and y equals 0. However... Normally, the points would go, the graphs would be go through this point and this point. But now, because we're reflecting, this point is going to be here, and it's going to approach there, and it's going to approach there. And instead of being on this point, it's going to reflect up here, and you're going to approach this way, and you're going to approach this way. So that's the, how the reflection works on the asymptotic lines. Moving down. So now we've got a lot going on. We've got a reflection, and we've got some translations. No dilation, though. So x equals negative 2 for this. 
y equals negative 3. Ding, 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 ding. So I'm going to put these up here, negative 2, negative 3. But instead of going through this point and this point, we're reflecting. Now we're going through this point, reflect, and draw. So it's kind of like if you still think about the, the coordinates or the, the quadrants move down. Normally you're in 1 and 3, but when you reflect, you go into 2 and 4. So normally you're in the odds, and then when you reflect, you go into the evens. Moving down. By the way, if I'm moving too fast, hit the pause button. So x equals 3. That is a vertical line, x equals 3. Y equals, oh, 5 is annoying. We're going to make that negative 2. Y equals negative 2. Negative 2, 3. There is no reflection and there is no dilation, so we're going to go through these, these single points right here and draw our curves so they go towards the asymptotic lines. All right, so there are going to be some rules that you need to memorize. You're going to learn a couple this year and you're going to learn a few more next year. The first one should come as no surprise. A vertical asymptote is what makes the denominator zero or what makes the fraction undefined. So you find the denominator and set it equal to zero. Cx plus d equals zero. You just solve for z, zero. Now, horizontal lines are a little bit different. Whenever the degree of the polynomial is the same and the top and the bottom, in this case the degree on the top is 1, the degree on the bottom is 1, then the horizontal asymptote will just be a ratio, excuse me, will just be a ratio of the leading coefficients, in this case a over c. Now again, I think I was speaking in a different language. Natürlich kann Deutsch reden mit dir, aber wahrscheinlich du willst mir nicht verstehen und dann haben wir ein großes Problem. Ja, verstehst? Right? So that's just about as much, you understood as about as much as that as you do the last thing. So let's do some concrete examples and let's see if I can make this a little bit more palatable for you. Uh, here we have a graph. Now if I just look at this graph, I see, hey, it looks like I have an asymptotic line here. And it looks like I have an asymptotic line here, or a line of asymptote here. And this is the line y equals 2, and this is the line x equals 3. But let's see if that makes sense. The vertical asymptotes are what make the denominator equal to 0. And if, clearly, if I solve this for 0, I get x equals 3. So that kind of makes sense. There's my vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes, or excuse me, that's my vertical asymptote, yeah. Horizontal asymptotes are a ratio of the leading coefficient. So in this case, I'll do it highlighted, it's fun. y equals 2 over 1, or just 2. And again, there is my asymptotic line. So that, I can look at it graphically, or I can look at it algebraically. So let's talk. I want to tell me the vertical and the horizontal. By the way, VA and HA. Don't call it HA, it's the HA and the VA, the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. Remember, this is what makes the denominator equal zero, and this is the ratio of A over C, or the leading coefficient over leading coefficient. So in this case, X equals one. Vertical lines are X equals lines, right? These are all X equals lines, these are all Y equals lines. The leading coefficients, well, they're both one, so that's Y equals one over one, or just one. That was kind of exciting. Set the denominator equals zero. That gives us our vertical asymptote. So I get 4x equals 2 or x equals 1 half. So my, this is my vertical asymptote. My horizontal asymptote, because of the same degree, will be the ratio of those. So y equals 2 over 4 or my horizontal asymptote will be y equals 1 half. And that's the horizontal asymptote. Excuse me. All right, we're moving, we're moving, we're doing good. Vertical asymptote, what makes the fraction undefined? So what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to zero. Uh, bring the 3x over, that makes it probably easier. No longer positive, no longer have any negatives. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So I get x equals 2 thirds. That's my vertical asymptote. My horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of these leading coefficients. Well, in this case, my leading coefficients are negative 1 over negative 3. But we all know that's just one third. So there's my lead, there's my horizontal asymptote. All right, only a few more left. 
for the third time today. So what I want to do now is I'm going to say I'm going to define this function g of x. g of x is going to be a transformation on the original parent function 1 over x. So every time this will just be 1 over x and then we're going to do some kind of transformation on it and you got to figure out what we're doing. So since we're adding or subtracting outside of the parentheses, this is a shift down or a tran translation down three. So is my, if it's going down three, my horizontal asymptote was zero, it goes down three. So my new horizontal asymptote will be y equals negative three. But since it didn't move left or right, my vertical asymptote is not going to change. This is a dilation of a factor one fourth. Because I didn't move left or right, and I didn't move up or down, my asymptotes are not going to change. They're going to go back to what the parent function is, and the parent function asymptotes are x equals 0 and y equals 0. Don't forget, when we put a negative in front, that's just a reflection. And again, since I did not add anything or subtract anything, there's no translation, there's no movement left, there's no movement right, my asymptotes are not going to change. They're going to be whatever the parent function is. And again, the parent function is y equals 0 and x equals 0. Uh-oh, now we're adding on the inside of this. So this is a trans... Why do I keep wanting to start with s? Translation. That's the transformation. It's called a translation right... Four, which means my vertical asymptote is going to change. It's going to move right four. So my vertical asymptote, instead of being x equals zero, is going to move to the four to the right. So x equals four. But since I didn't add or subtract on the outside, I'm not going up or down. My translation up or down is still zero, or my horizontal asymptote is still zero. And the last problem, and when I hit stop today, if the audio is not there, I am not doing this again. we got a lot going on here. The first thing we see is a reflection. Then we've got this 3, which is a dilation. Adding on the inside is backwards, so this is a translation left 2. We're also going to translate up 4. So normally my asymptotes are x equals 0, but we're moving left 2. So that's x equals negative 2. And normally my asymptote, my horizontal asymptote, remember this is my VA, this is my HA. Normally my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, but we moved up 4, so that becomes y equals 4. And that, my friends, hopefully, will be the third and final time I make the final video of 2015. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that video for the third time. I wasn't quite as funny because I didn't move my head as much because it was kind of cool. Oh, and I didn't make as many commercials. By the way, Burgers has agreed to sponsor me. They're going to give me $0.00 and zero cents for the next 10 years. Okay, that's not great. That's not great. But... You know what's great? You guys are great. And I want you to stay great. And I want you to stay safe. So as you go into your vacation, please remember, be safe. Take care of your friends. Take care of each other. Rule of thumb, if you're at a party or you're at a get-together, you're at a house, and you find that you're the smartest, by far, person in that room, and or the less weird person or goofy person or person doing the right thing and everybody else is doing the wrong thing, it is time to leave. If you hang around people that bring you down, you're going to go down eventually. I mean, you need to hang around people that are going to uplift you and make you a better person. Trust me, the good kids are having as much fun as the kids that are doing the wrong thing. And you want to be doing the right thing, and you want to be doing it for the right reason, and you want to, it'll help you become successful. Eventually, it'll probably help you make more money, but the most important thing is that you're successful. And successful means you've got a, a productive 
education and you got a good education and you got a good job and you're making enough money that you can live and do things on your own. And that's going to happen if you do the right thing and you hang around the right people. So look around. If everybody around you is doing the wrong thing, it's not the place for you to be. Have a wonderful, wonderful Merry Christmas. Have a great, great Happy New Year. And if you haven't hit subscribe yet, hit subscribe. Man, you guys are awesome. You rock. I'm loving this year. And I hope you guys enjoyed my hat. Merry Christmas. Bye.